morning guys um, I just thought I'd do this video it, it all comes from when I've told people many times that if they cut corners on a pond it'll always come back and haunt them um, at a later date you know it's sort of like some people do because a lot of people rush to do a pond and I'm exactly and this is the pond that I'll show you which is where I rushed on a job and was never happy about it you know like some people you know they'd get a liner because it was quicker it's cheaper they can just drop it in and away they go rather than getting it fiberglass because I always tell people just wait a little bit longer right just wait another few weeks or a few months you know till the next few paydays get get enough in there and get it fiberglass because the worst possible thing and this is something that as a dealer I see all the time is that people will do it and then six months later they'll go I wish I'd have done that wish I'd have done that and the problem is with it is that when you go down in the morning to have a look at your fish when it's a nice summer's day and everything like that you the pond's there the fish are all right but then you think I wish I'd have fiberglassed it and that you know sometimes I've known people even get out of the hobby because of it because they're so da downhearted that they never did it and that's why you know th that's why I always say to people make sure you do it as best you possibly can now you know and if there's something that you can't do right now just wait a little bit longer there's no rush fish are always going to be here you know the pond's always going to be there so it's not there's no major rush to do it but some people are just impatient and like when I was when I built this pond that I'm going to show you now um, this is a pond that we have in the shop, which I have the exact same problem with. I'll come in in the morning and go, that pond, you know. Ugh. You know, I don't even like selling fish out of there, to be honest with you. I just don't like the pond at all. And, it, and it's totally wrong. Um, the flow rate, everything about the pond is wrong. But at the time, when we, when we got this greenhouse that we're in now, like we've got the full unit now, the full, the full thing, but we only had a quarter of it at first. Um, and then we're just slowly taking it over over the years, you know, stage by stage. Um, but the first pond that we did was what we call the long pond. Now, it isn't the right way to do a pond. It's not the right size of a pond, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just the, the measurements are wrong. Everything's wrong about the pond. And I don't know, I think this will probably one of the, be one of the first ponds that we do here where we need to redo it. We need to probably tear it down and rebuild it a lot different in fact we'll probably even just split it split it into two um maybe so what i'll do is i'll just show you i'll show you why i don't like it um it's nothing to do with the filters you could have any filter on this pond and it'll still give me the same down art man it, it just it, i just don't like it I, I, it's just not a pond for me i wish i'd have done it a lot different but at the time we were rushing we wanted to get a pond here fast I got a good deal on some block. We wanted to get it done. The guy who was building the pond for me only had a short window. So we need, I rushed it. And that's the worst thing you can do. We were all excited because we were moving from the polytunnels into the thing. We were all, you know, we're growing, we're growing. Um, you know, and we wanted to get it done as fast as possible, but done it all wrong, all wrong. And it gets to the stage now where I really totally dislike this pond. Um, in some ways it's good, some ways it's bad, but I'll run through it now and I'll tell you what we've got on it. So this is it. what we call the long pond. Now, this pond is over 30 feet long and only probably four foot, four foot wide. Now, originally we had a neck, there's two drains, sorry, there's two bottom drains in the pond. Right, now initially we had the nexus pulling through one drain there and then there was another drain there and then initially we had a sieve on this system we had a cetus on the system um but again it never we never got great clarity in this pond and it's nothing to do with the uv or anything like that it's purely down to the way that the system works the system works wrong right because it's too long the pond is just too long to be able to filter especially from two bottom drains i mean if i had four bottom drains in here I think that'd be better, but then I'd have to have four different types of filtration. I don't want to do that. So the easiest thing to do with this pond really is just cut it in two really. And I think that's probably what we'll end up doing um, in the future because now I've got one of the older style, came, these are one of the first bead filters that came out. Um, now that sort of the clarity issue, no problem. So we've got one from a four inch bottom drain, it comes down there and then we reduce it down 
into a 12,000 pump through the bead and then we're going back through two returns, right? But the two returns are not even restricted properly. It's just the way that we did it. We can't really restrict them and they're on the same place. So we've got two returns that are coming that way. So they're shooting the pond down that way, right? But it doesn't matter, even if you had a massive pump on there, right? You can see the water coming down. So it is coming down here, right? So you can still see a flow. If you have a look there, you can still see the flow, right? But then from the Nexus, I've only got 8,000 litre pump on there, right? Which comes in on one return from that back end, right? So we've got a decent flow coming all the way down here. And then I've just got a, a mediocre flow going up the other side. Now it will turn, the pond, the pond does turn, but for the people that, you know, that worry about fines, we don't have fines in the pond as such. The thing that we suffer from in this pond, especially when there's not that many fish in, is solids, right? It just won't take them off the base. Even though the bases are sloped, right, is that the flow, the flow is not pushing the, the debris down the drains. And that's the issue with this pond, right? And there's nothing else I can do with it. You know, people say, oh, stick a shower on it. There's nothing. I can't put anything on there to, what, to increase the flow, really. Um, but on a good note is that when this pond has got the fishing in the summer and the temperature's hot and we have got a, a, quite a lot of flow rate, you can see the flow spinning there, but it isn't going all the way and then all the way back up here, right? And this pond is probably one of the hardest ponds we have to catch fish out of because they are nuts when they're in this pond. They've got this full run and when you, I mean, they jump, they ju oh, it's incredible the, the, the fish is behaving here. So the fish are always healthy, don't get me wrong. And the water is spot on, right? So you know when your pH nitrite ammonia is all great, no problem whatsoever. But it's just wrong, right? It, we do get a lot of solids settling on the bottom, which it's easy to disguise when you have a lot of fish right in the system which we do as dealers um then they then they swirl it around and stuff like that but we do have an issue with solids and like i said to you, it's got nothing to do with the filtration it's to the way that the pond was designed and the pond was rushed the clarity is great in the pond the uv is doing its job because at the end of the day it's only two and a half thousand gallons right and i've got a nexus 320 and i've got a bead on there right so but still, it was the return lines, and that's why it's not great. Now, maybe I could put some more return lines in, but then I'd have to go on that far wall there, and I'd still have to knock some of the pipe down because I just can't physically get behind. Um, there's no skimmer in the system either. Um, again, you know, as dealers, we don't, we, these are sales tanks more than anything. But let me just turn it back round again. This is more of a, I know a lot of people will be designing new ponds um, at this time of year ready to get them built for the summer um, and this is I just wanted to, to let you know that this is a wrong way of doing a pond especially if you're building a long pond you need to put as many return lines in that system as you can um, three just ain't good enough even for two and a half thousand gallons because the run is just too far right and get it the run goes down one side but then it doesn't go back up the other side which is the issue right so down so in, in the second half of the pond we've always got some debris in there and it's not fine, it's actual big pieces of solids, fish muck, stuff like that. And it just takes an age to go down the drain. Like I said, it's, it, it disguises it quite well when you've got quite a lot of fish in here because then they'll stir up the muck and that'll go down the drain. Um, but this is just to show people how important the return lines are gonna go back into the pond. And also I've just been having a discussion this week um, about return lines. This is what I wanted to get on to really because that's the most important doesn't matter what filters you're having doesn't matter right it's your return lines and the flow rate that's going to go around that pond that is number one number one and the shape will dictate that so your pond the shape of your pond will dictate what return lines can go in the pond right now it doesn't matter if you've got a circular pond it doesn't matter if you've got a square pond it doesn't matter if you've got a rectangular pond it doesn't matter right but you've just got to put the return lines in and the correct return lines right now when people ask me i give them the same answer so i just give them the same answer is any return line say if you're going to put two in right we're going to go six issues from the top six issues from the bottom they need to be going in the same direction so the return lines need to be all going in the same direction because what we're trying to do is we're going to 
the bottom drain, we're going to we're going to spin that water so the bottom drain it all comes down into the bottom drain. We've got slope sides, and that's going to go into the drain. Right? That's it's simple, really. It's a simple mathematic thing. Really. Well, uh, just for flow rates. Right now, if we're going to go for a bigger pond and we've got two drains, right? We might want four returns in there. So we've still initially got our one at six inch from the bottom, one at six inches from the top, and then we're just gonna put them on the middle, in the middle somewhere, but they're gonna be on di different walls, right? And But as long as they're spinning the same way, right? It doesn't matter which filter's going into what, which skimmer's going into what, just get the return lines in first, right? The other thing is, is if you've got a skimmer, right? So you've got the skimmer on the top of the water, don't put a return at the top, so it's gonna take the muck away from the skimmer. So if you've got a top return, you're going to agitate the water and you're going to move all the muck away from the skimmer, right? So when that skimmer wall, put a low down return, right? And then that'll take the, the water underneath and then the skimmer will skim, right? So that'll do it. I, I see a lot of ponds where they've got a jet coming straight past the skimmer. So all you're doing is taking the muck away from the skimmer. You're not get, letting it go into the skimmer. So that's um, another one. But this is what I just wanted to tell you on this new pond. Um, so like I said, it's just, the returns are just wrong, right? So there's nothing else I can put on here, um, you know, to get me that extra flow because I've only got the three returns, so that's it. So technically speaking, if I was gonna redo this pond again, I'd probably have about six, you know, on a, on a pond of this, like this, I would probably, like I've done with the two returns on that side that come in on the same wall, on a pond like this, then you can put another on the same wall. You could put two on the opposite wall but the thing is, again, is I'm not getting the same flow from a Nexus that I am from a bead, right? So, and I don't want to put two beads on this system. So, you know, it's a tricky one, but this is a pond that we did wrong. Um, I can't even blame Paul on this one, um, but yeah. In fact, I will blame Paul, it was all Paul's fault. Paul designed it and everything, and I told him at the time that we needed more returns. So it was his fault, um, but yeah. So, but that's, that's the thing, and that's what I want to tell you. So people who are going to start building ponds this year, right? don't care what filters you put on it, I don't care what you do with it, right, is that you make sure you've got the correct returns going back into the pond, right? It doesn't matter what the hardest pipe's coming in, it doesn't matter, but you, the flow is going to be the most important thing, especially for the debris, the muck, the fines, everything like that. It's your flow rates, right? So people might have a, a dirty pond, right? But that's because they've got just a flow coming in like that, right? Just coming in off the side of the wall, right? It's not going to do anything. All you're going to do is make your fish massive, Right, big, big, thick, big like rugby ball, we call it. We call them like rugby ball syndrome because there's no flow in the water. You need to get as much flow around that pond as you possibly can. Not only for the fish, is health, because they'll swim against that flow, they'll be get healthy, their immune system will come up and everything like that, but it's also for the waste. So a lot, a lot of these people, I mean, you put anything on a filter, on, on a pond, but it can only be as good as what, what you're giving it, what you're designing for making that filter work. Now, if you design the pond specifically for that filter, right, it'll work brilliantly, right? But just the pond flow rate, the returns is the most important thing that you can do now. And also, if you're gonna put a skimmer on, like I said before, make sure that that's in the right place to where the flow is gonna go. So this is just for people. I'll probably pick up on it again in a minute, but I've just got a customer in now, so I just need to go and see him. Um, but I will pick back up on this Sorry in about that. Um, that was actually, um, another YouTuber who's testing out a Tempest um, and he's probably the most OCD person I've ever met in my life so if he can't do a decent test on it nobody can so make sure you check out Daz's um, Daz Koi, Dazzle Koi channel um, and he will I think he's going to put it on today actually oh not today because this won't be out today but soon anyway so I think you'll probably see it before you see this really so it's pointless but anyway um, so yeah so long thin ponds nightmare nightmare to get right now i know i've seen some which are great you know don't get me wrong you know people have got long ponds um exactly like this and they've done it they've done it the correct way um but you know and, and they run great you know and if i but with this pond i still when i'm thinking about it when i'm like doing videos and we're seeing ponds and everything like that like, and i come back to this pond and i'm still unsure of how i would redo it if you know what i mean it, I don't know how I'd be able to get the right amount of flow because I don't want to get into it too much, but you know, with any filtration system, you've only got so many gallons per hour you can put through the pond, you see? So, especially coming from one drain, right? So, 
you know, it's a 2,500 gallon pond. You don't want to go crazy, you know, with the filtration. I mean, luckily for us, I mean, with the bead that we've got on that side, we had it because it was the first one that ever came out, so we tested it. Um, but again, it's very difficult to be able to get the water flow through. Um, so I don't know how I would redesign the pond again if I was going to build a pond exactly the same size. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't build another pond this size. It was just a big mistake. But as I said, where the pond finishes, that's the only space we had in here, you see. So what I should have technically done is put maybe three ponds in there. Now, um, we did have... Let me just show you. Just forgot to mention that on the third. You'll see these little cuts into the, into the thing there and over there. And there's another one there. And there. We put... Um, like plates down and they, and they went down and they had like um, corrugated sheet so the water could still pass through and we were going to use them to split three different size groups of fish but even it made it even worse when you put the when you put them in for the solids it was crazy um so we we've thrown them away now uh, i think we might have one left but i only use that now say if we're exporting fish abroad i'll put that in down there and i'll move all the fish that are going there so it just makes us easiest to catch them when we come to packing them because we'll be packing them at like two in the morning and stuff like that so that's what we did on there so again that didn't work either um it just made even more solids because you're just restricting the flow even more on the pond um i'm still i still wouldn't I just wouldn't design it again. I'd, I, I would, I'd just rip it down and start again and do maybe two ponds instead of, maybe two ponds and come out a little bit more rather than the big long pond. I just don't, you know, like I said, it's one of them things where I just, I really don't like the pond. Every other pond in here now is great. It runs well. Um, I will do another, I'll do a short video at some stage on my toes eye pond because I did, I did something on there which was, which, which worked really well um, when I split the actual ponds. We've got four ponds. Anyway, I'll do that on another video. Um, but like I said, yes, yeah. so if you are deciding to build a pond, any shape's fine, any shape, but you've just got to put the thought into it to where you're going to put the return lines and everything like that before before you actually start building um, because there's nothing worse than not having enough, like I've got on here now, not having enough return lines and then having no way of adding more return lines. You know, I don't want to start putting pipes over the top um, and stuff like that so you know it'll just make it look horrible and it would do on any pond you know you don't want pipes going in over the top of the wall and stuff like that so you know it's very hard for me to redo this pond and I think the best way to do it is maybe not this year but the year after I think I will rip it down and um, start again um, and build two ponds out of it and you know like I say you know there's things are advancing all the time in the filters in the filters and stuff so we will get um, might be something new coming on uh, on the horizon um, there will be something new on our main show pond in the next month, I hope. So I've been told, so let's hope that that comes to fruition. Um, but yeah, so that's this pond. Just again, just be careful when you're building any size pond, you put the right amount of return lines in. Right amount of bottom drains, right amount of return lines. Don't join your bottom drains. You'll never find the right balance, which is what I could have done on this pond, but it just wouldn't have worked. I'd still had the same problem. Um, but yeah, so again, all Paul's fault um, and I'll catch you on the next video guys thanks for watching see you later